So looking at this again, you've got to decide, am I, am I trying to build top 1% old money or new money? Okay. And, and the difference, the difference is old money is consistent, repeatable action, right? Rockefeller started building a business and then he built another business and then he built another business. All of us can go build a business. These were profitable businesses. This was before the, the era of the stock market being this popular thing. There was no benefit to him trying to get this giant valuation on a share price. He wasn't trying to do that. He was trying to get earnings. He was trying to get positive cash flow through the company. So we can all do that. That's a duplicatable action. So he built businesses and built businesses. And then he started bringing in partners, right? Then he started you know, adding in businesses that were, that were parallel to his current one. He was doing oil. He's like, well, how do I take that and start doing kerosene and these different components using oil, right? All of the byproducts. And so he did that. And then he was like, okay, great. Now it's time to start investing. I'm going to start doing real estate. I'm going to start getting into banking. You know, at the very end, he finally started getting into stocks, right? So when I look at that, that's something I can do. That's something you can do, Right. I can't go raise money from investors, angel investors for a tech company that doesn't exist. I don't know how to program. I don't have a team in India that can do development for me. I don't, I don't have all of these connections that are just going to freely give me money knowing they might lose it. Right? So I have to look at this. Which route am I going? And I'm going to talk to you tonight. Okay. We're going to go, we're going to go old money route. This is, this is what I wrote my book on. Right? So when I wrote this book, Blueprint to Financial Freedom, I spent 10 years studying these guys. Right. So I was a financial advisor first. I was doing, like I said, the retail and the mainstream stuff. And what happened was I had one appointment and this changed my life forever. Sat down on the appointment. I was pretty new in the business. And I tried to explain the guy to the guy, like the benefits of investing. Right. And I was like, you know, you need to be diversifying, you know, buying lots of different things and spreading out your risk. And you need to be in different market sectors and you need to be doing you know, a, a dollar cost averaging plan where you buy every month into the stock market and you build up your retirement. And, and he literally was like, he did like, he good, he got it, but he didn't get it. And I'll never forget this. Cause this guy was a millionaire. I'm sitting across from him, 18 years old. And he's like, he's like, he's like, what is, what is a stock? And I was like, you know what a stock is? And so I started explaining to him, I was like, it's ownership in a company. You get a certificate, you get a share, they pay, you know, maybe a dividend. You can sell it more for later. He's like, no, 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 no. But when I buy one, what do I get? And for the life of me, like, I was like, well, you get the ability to get a dividend and appreciate it. Like, no, no, no. What do I get? Like, other than the piece of paper, what do I get? And I was like, well, you can vote. And he's like, okay, but they're not going to listen to me. Right. They have a board of directors. They're not going to listen to me in, 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 in Wasilla, Alaska for my vote. Right. So I'm sitting there trying to explain to this guy what a stock is. And for the life of me, I couldn't get him to get it. And it wasn't that he was stupid. It was that I couldn't get him to see the value in what a stock was. Right. And so that appointment ended with him saying, Jerry, when you're ready to learn the truth about money, I want you to come talk to me. Okay. This guy, he was, he was the, the father of my best friend in, in, in middle school. Okay. All throughout high school. Right. Never saw him work. I was at his house every Wednesday for, for, for church stuff and Bible studies and different things, youth groups, hanging out with his son. And this guy, you know, he, he would just do projects. He would just putz around, you know, he would build things. He would, you know, be, you know, like off on, on these, you know, different investment, you know, due diligence trips. And I never knew what he did for a living. Right. And so I, that stuck with me. I was like, I have all the licenses and all the knowledge and I can't get this guy to understand what this stuff is. Okay. Another conversation I had him ask me, what's a retirement plan? And I was like, well, you, you put money into it and you get a tax deduction. He's like, yeah, but, but then, then what? Like, what can I do with it? And I was like, well, you invest it in the things we talked about before, the mutual funds and the stocks and the bonds. And he's like, okay, so, so I'm going to give my money up and I'm going to get a tax deduction, but I could already get a tax deduction doing these other things that I do. And then I'm going to lose control of the money for the next 40 years. And then when I pull it out, I'm going to have to pay taxes. Taxes are going to be higher and I'm going to have to withdraw money more money than I put in because of inflation. It costs more dollars to buy the same things. And I remember, I remember like thinking he was wrong. I was like, that, that, this guy just whatever, for, for whatever reason, that doesn't click. 
And I remember sitting down with my manager and I was talking to my manager at the time, right? My manager had been in the financial industry over 20 years. Guy made half a million dollars a year in income. And I was like, his name was Randy. I was like, Randy, why doesn't, why don't these, like, I've had these two or three guys that I sit down with and they're like real estate dudes and they don't get, like, I can't get them to understand it. And I remember this, this guy been in the business 20 or 30 years. And he's like, yeah, I remember my first time meeting with one of those people. For some reason, they just can't see what it is that we do. Right. And the idea was that they had it all wrong, that these real estate people, these investors, they had it all wrong. They just couldn't see the light. And, and no matter how hard you tried, they just couldn't figure it out. And so I remember like, like looking at this and I was like, okay. And then as I would go on appointments, I'd meet with everyone else, everyone else being, you know, the working class and mom and dad and the family and, 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 you know, the normal people and they were stressed out. And it was something that I, I never, I never picked up when I met with these investors. When I met with the everyday family, they were worried about paying the bills next week. They were worried about what if I get sick or injured? They were worried about what if I lose my job? And sure, I was setting up a retirement plan for them and I was teaching them the basics of buying you know, Wall Street financial products, but they were still worried when I left. And that worry wasn't there for the, the investors. They didn't have that. It was almost like they were almost like borderline careless, right? So that was for me, I, I call it pulling the string. I started pulling the string on that. I was like, okay, what, like, what is this factor? What is this factor that I see in these investors that I can't, A, I can't get them to understand why they should do what I sell. And then B, why are they never stressed out about money? Right. And part of it was, again, to go back to my level of financial education, I thought that I had the right information. Here's the tricky thing about knowledge, guys. Knowledge is, is validated by, by usually like when we learn something, we look for the reason why it's true. Right. So when I learn something, whether it's true or not, if I believe it is, I'm immediately going to start looking for proof. I'm going to immediately start looking for reasons why it's right. And so that's very hard to like decipher between, well, which knowledge is truer? Because one of them I'm aware to, the other one I'm not. If I'm not aware enough yet to start looking at this other knowledge, I'm never going to see the factors and the hints that it, it's, it's the true knowledge because it's not something I'm aware to yet. Yeah, Avery says confirmation bias, right? And, and, and in within that confirmation bias, like I don't have the awareness level of what these other guys are doing with finances. I don't have the awareness level of what the top 1% are doing with finances, right? And, and I see this on, on TikTok. I've been doing a lot of promoting on TikTok. I share these top 1% concepts. Immediately, people are like, scam, put it in Wall Street, give it to your 401k just by the S&P 500 index funds. And when you're 60, you'll be good, right? And that's that confirmation bias, but it's also the, and I had this, such a lack of awareness that there's no ability to see the other side. If you're wondering what does Wealth Dynamics do, how can we actually help you? Number one, if you haven't gotten a copy of my book, Blueprints of Financial Freedom, grab one now. You can get that down in the uh, comments in the video. You can get the link for that. Number two, we do a free course on Fridays on personal finance. Hey, you can also get the link for the description there too. And then finally, if you have a desire to start getting help walking through these different phases toward financial freedom, book a call with my team. Go to our website, set up a call, and we're able to help out and answer questions. That's how we can help you. Thank you for watching. Like, share, subscribe. Make sure you turn notifications on and I will talk to you guys on the next video.